Is the dishwasher clean or dirty? Uh, it's dirty. Let me explain to you how this new automation works. Let's say the system is quiet. Nothing is happening, dishwasher isn't running, it's just quiet. I take a dishwashing pod and throw it in. Now, because it's a dumb washer, the system doesn't know that I have anything in there. It doesn't know that it's dirty, clean, or anything. It's stupid. Only me and my wife will go into the fridge, and I need the alert to basically notify one of the two of us. My daughter is unlikely to be going into the fridge, at least for the time being. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but this is what I have handy. If the dishwasher is in a dirty state, absolutely nothing will happen. But if the dishwasher is in a clean state, is the dishwasher clean or dirty? Uh, it's dirty. I'm excited. Have you guys seen this video? Yeah. All right. So this is Creature and it's pretty old and reaching the end of its life. So I'm gonna use AI to give it a reason to stay out of the trash can. Uh, back when I made it, it wasn't that popular. People didn't understand or get it. I've been recently trying to experiment with this concept uh, for other automations in my house. And one specifically, I did it for the dishwasher. Oh, by the way, if you don't know what that video was about, uh, here's a 20 second premise. Essentially, you have automations that you create manually. You go into Home Assistant or whatever system you use, and then you choose all the things, you the conditions, the triggers, the actions, and it's all uh, discrete. It's all deterministic. But then the question was, could you use AI to like substitute parts of those? So you may have, let's say, the real triggers, but then when it comes to the actions and the conditions, AI will control all of that. Here's the premise. You have a dishwasher and you want to be able to update the state. Like you want your home to know whether or not the things in the dishwasher is clean, dirty, or if it's currently being cleaned. I have a smart plug connected to the dishwasher so I can tell when the dishwasher is active or inactive. It just now comes down to determining whether or not the things inside are clean or dirty. The way I kind of worked around this was just using a timer. If after it was clean for a specific amount of time, just automatically switch it to dirty. But that doesn't always help because we don't use the dishwasher every time. There's some times where we just don't use it. So then it's wrongfully set to dirty. So I came up with this solution here. Hi there. Could you please let me know if the dishwasher is clean or dirty? Uh, I think it's dirty. Thanks for letting me know. I'll make a note that the dishwasher is dirty. Nice, nice, nice. So I figured it out. And if you can see here, it has it as dirty. This automation is pretty simple. So I'm gonna show you in Home Assistant. The complete automation is split into two parts. One automation is responsible for setting the state to clean or cleaning and the other sets the state to dirty. There's a select drop down helper that has the three states mentioned from before. Now setting the state to clean and cleaning is pretty straightforward and depends on the Akara plug attached to the dishwasher. The automation fires when the power is above the threshold for over five minutes or when it's under for 10 minutes. The action depends on these conditions. The power level above three, then the dishwasher's state is set to cleaning. If the power level is below three and is currently in the cleaning state, then it's set to clean. But like I mentioned before, the issue is setting the state to dirty. The dishwasher isn't smart. Even if I could, let's say, have a smart dishwasher or see if the door is open or closed, it doesn't really solve the issue of knowing whether or not it's clean or dirty. Now, the simplest and cleanest solution would be to use a button or maybe an NFC tag, but I don't have any extra buttons lying around. And I know from experience that NFC tags don't work for my family. So in an effort to think outside the box, the solution I have is to use the voice PE with a tiny bit of AI, but you could do this without AI though. The second automation will ask if the dishwasher is dirty. To start the automation, I wait for the fridge to open. About 99% of the time, this is gonna be done by me or my wife. The small other percentage will be from my five-year-old kid. Now, to prevent the automation from being too annoying, I will only continue if the dishwasher is currently clean, it's between 7 p.m. and midnight, and most importantly, it has to wait about a minimum of an hour before asking again. 
If all of the above is true, then the following three actions will occur in sequence. First, a message plays on the voice PE asking if the dishwasher is clean or dirty. The answer is then sent to AI to return a Boolean. True if dirty, false if clean. Now you can do this without AI, but I like using it because I don't have to answer like a robot for the system to understand my intent. And then lastly, using the returned Boolean value from the AI, the state is updated. If it's set to clean, the system will ask again the next time the fridge is opened, but if it's set to dirty, the system will stay quiet until the dishwasher runs. I created two versions of this automation. I did it one way where it was deterministic. Basically, if this, then that, like all the nodes and all of the automations kind of followed a very specific flow. You can do that with a home assistant. You can do that with a node red, like that was doable. But when I did the AI version, it required a bit more nodes. It required more attention. And there was something interesting that came out while I was kind of working on these two. And that is there's like the sliding scale between what you can do with automations versus what you can do without it. Let's put it this way. Imagine you have a line and on that line on one side you have fully AI and on the other side you have fully deterministic. Now, depending on where you have that slider determines how much code is hard coded versus how much AI is used. The more AI you use, or if you put that slider all the way to the end and say you want things fully AI, then that AI is gonna need well-written prompts, it's gonna need very good context, and the actions are gonna have to be built in such a way where it is almost uh, agnostic to anything that your system can do. Essentially, you can have any set of actions and AI would be able to notice it and immediately take advantage of it. We are not there yet. I think that's what we need to get to in order to have this fully autonomous system. Right now, I think we are kind of 50-50 and we're about 50-50, maybe a little bit more than 50-50, but here's the fun part. You get to decide where on that sliding scale you wanna be. When you create your automations, you can say, hey, I want AI to only handle just a little bit, or you can have it handle a lot. It's completely up to you. Because AI is controlling the flow, it needs to be flexible to jump to different parts of the automation at any point in time. However, the logic is still the same as before. There are still two triggers for changing the state to clean and cleaning. There's one for when the power is above the threshold for five minutes and one for when the power is below the threshold for 10 minutes. The AI has instructions that will help it choose the change dishwasher state action, which is how it actually goes about changing the state. So far, we can change the state to clean and cleaning but now we need to handle changing the state to dirty. In the first automation, we use the voice PE in order to help determine if the state is dirty. In this automation, we're going to do something similar with some slight tweaks. When the fridge door opens, we make sure that the dishes are clean for about two hours, and then eventually we check with the AI to see if it should ask about the dishwasher state. The two tweaks that you may have noticed here is that we have a condition that the dishes should be cleaned for about two hours and there's this leading debounce. Both are responsible for throttling the AI calls. In the past, I ran into this issue. I accidentally put ChatGPT in an infinite loop and this is how much it costs me. Having it wait prevents the system from burning through all my tokens if the instructions are bad. You can think of this like a hardware level lock. It's a fail safe that software can't bypass. Is this version better? Not entirely, but it is cooler. <laughs> Here's some things that I feel is a bit wrong with the AI version. The first one is that it's uh, AI. So it's not gonna get it right all the time and it's gonna be highly dependent on how well you write your prompts. Uh, I had my prompts written and I thought they were good, but it would go off at the wrong time. So it does get annoying every now and then. I, and I'm gonna be honest, like I don't think my wife has ever talked to that thing once. So in general, I think the baseline automation of it asking whether or not the dishwasher is clean or dirty, I don't even think that's like a good way of doing it. Th there are better ways, but again, I'm just trying stuff out. I'm trying it out. And the point of me actually doing this was to actually test it with AI and to really dig into this one benefit over the air updates. I was actually able to convert that AI version of the automation into a more dynamic 
automation. Uh, I turned it into an automation that is able to be updated over the year. What does that mean? Watch this next video and find out. Oh, and if you wanna get all of this automation and whatnot, uh, check out the Tech Enthusiast community. You're gonna find all of that stuff there. So check the link below and subscribe.